It's not going to happen. Jeb, you're gone. Jeb, done. Get off done, the stage done, or done. stay on the stage. Jeb had that good comment. I'll give him that. Now, one one comment in the chat room by Amanda, our, our resident rhino. Um, she wrote, Rhino is a tactical, Donald is not. I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to pull a Mitt Romney. I'll bet anybody, anybody, an amount of money to be determined that Donald Trump lasts longer in this race than Jeb Bush. Who wants to take that bet? You email us, tweet us, whatever you got to do. I'll bet you. And by the way, this is a good time to do some plugs. Thanks for listening to Behind Me Lines after dark, apparently. Here at Cafe on the Hill in Bensonhurst, Gravesend, Brooklyn, New York. I'm Gene, he's Russ, and while we got you listening this late, check us out online at www.behindemylinesradio.us. You can listen to the show on podcast on any number of different outlets, including iTunes, Player FM, Podbay, Spreaker, Stitcher, and, of course, podcast.com, our newest one, which we'll be putting a link to on our site. And then check us out on the Facebooks and the Twitters at BEL underscore radio. Overall, Russ, are those all of our interweb? Um, we got a lot references? of interwebs. Yes, we have a lot of interwebs. Right. We, we, we're sure trying to get the show out to as many people I as possible. I heard we got to get the show out there on the interwebs to be popular. Yeah, but when you said that, you walked over to the spider web in the corner of the bar and put a logo. That's not what we meant. That's not getting it on the webs. That's not it. I know it's late. It's okay. Bad jokes happen. Let's start wrapping this up here because. They're starting to close down the place. I, I just heard last call. I did hear last call. And we, got, we got about William five, six Keo minutes Neal, left. Who has, I believe he's endorsed the show. Yeah, but you know what? I want to get William on right now for one reason. William, pull up a chair. Is I want because you to, he's red-faced and yeah, plastered? Pull it between me That's and Russell really over wild. here. Here's what we're going to do. Because, ladies and gentlemen... I learned something about William P. O'Neill, our good friend, this week that shocked me. You are a Jeb Bush supporter. Is that not true? Yes or no? Come close. Don't be scared of the mic. Come close. Yes or no? Yes, I am. I, I... Wow! I approve of Jeb Bush. And how do you think he did tonight? How do you think he did? I think he did a lot better than expected. He held his own for him being who he is. And he stood toe-to-toe as best he could with a Gallo's boy, Trump. And let me be the first one to take Gallo up on his, on oh, his, he's he's on his challenge. He's challenge, Gallo. Mark my words. I, William P. Neal III, am saying it's, it's Bush, Jeb Bush, or it's Trump. And I'm going with the Jeb. Trump. Wow. Okay. We got to bring in some other guests here that have hung out with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to be Yak Attack once again. Yakov Bard, Buckle the Yak up. Attack. Buckle up. Here he is. All right. Who's your big winner? My big winner com- totally, totally has to be Carly Fiorina. Because once again, she has proven that not only has she earned a spot at the top tier um, list, she has ruled, completely ruled. People have been, have been saying that Donald Trump is a Teflon Don. Well, Carly Farina is back to differ. She has been the only person that not only was able to take on Donald Trump, but not look like a jackass like Lindsey Graham and other rhinos have. She proves that the right path to taking on someone like Donald Trump is not only... Being knowledgeable on the issues and sticking to the issues and not He's making it gas. too personal. He's running out of gas. We've got to reel him back. Reel him back in, Russ. Reel him back in. For the record, for the record, before the debate even started, Yak said that Cauli Fiorina was a real MILF. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> We're not going there at all. Can I confirm it or not? All right. Thanks a lot, Yak, for coming on. Well, you know what? I think everybody here is giving their opinion but me, Russ. And I gotta be honest, I am the quintessential undecided voter right now in the Republican Party because my guy Rick Perry dropped out. I thought Rick would have been great on this stage. Yes, let's all raise a glass. Here, I got one here left here. Let's all raise a glass to, to Governor Perry. God bless you, brother. 
You did a great job. We love you. I would have voted for you. And now I'm left undecided. So I'm really the voter that they're after right now, Russ. And for me, yes, Carly Free Arena did a great job in the second debate. And to MILF. Oh, I mean... That's not, that's not what I'm saying. Thank I'm just you. just reading your show prep notes. You're not... Gene. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> that's all I'm doing. But for me... <laughs> but for me... When I was looking for a candidate to who, who was speaking, and I was looking to see what was going on and who was talking at the time, the only one who kept my attention was Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, he didn't get enough face time. That's the first thing. He started off talking very slowly and meticulously that you pointed that out in the beginning of the debate, and he kind of picked it up towards the end. But he is the only one that grabbed my attention and kept it through his whole speech. And he's also the only one that I noticed that CNN's Jake Tapper would step on every last statement he made just to ruin the soundbite. I think there's something out there that people are scared of Ted Cruz getting traction. Because once he does, look out. He, had, he didn't get traction tonight, but he will. Listen, if Donald Trump... Which drink is this, by the way? Is this mine or is this yours? That's yours. That's yours. Nice. If Donald Trump... Oh, that's mine. All right, forget yeah. it. If Donald Trump was not in this race, Ted Cruz by far would be king of the nerds. But Donald Trump's in the race, and there's a cool guy in this race. So there you go. I mean, I like Ted Cruz. I agree with everything he says, and I think he's a true conservative. I really do. But like you said earlier, and I said before you, I believe, he speaks slowly. He speaks slowly, carries a big stick, whatever that means. Too slow for when you have one minute to tell everyone your opinion and 30 seconds to respond to an attack. If you're speaking slowly with pauses, that's not enough time. A guy like Donald Trump, this is the way he surges. He needs to bring up the cadence. I agree with you on that. But for me, as far as... By the way, Ben Carson, second place, this is his problem right now. Mark this, this, this segment, Gene. Carly Fiorina is going to surge... And the, the numbers are going to come from Ben Carson, not Donald Trump. Because Carson has the same slow cadence. And, uh, just a, a final thought from me now, because we're going to get off the air here. It's been a hell of a night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us late here on Behind Enemy Lines. We're going to plug the Brooklyn Wilders, of course, like we always do. The Brooklyn Wilders put through a great party. There's going to be some photos up on www.brooklynyrs.com. Check them out. Uh, don't you wish you were here with us, by the way, with the Brooklyn YRs. We had a great time. Russ, here's my final thought, and it's a name we haven't mentioned yet, and it's Scott Walker. He's going to be the next one to drop out. He did nothing to distinguish himself. He did nothing to put himself out there in front of the people. He had canned lines. He was stiff. He was uncomfortable. It just didn't work for him. That's someone I think is going to be gone soon. I agree with you. Cauley Fiorina sees a surge. Trump maybe sees a small dip, small dip, because there will be some people out there who are going to walk away from Trump and walk towards Carly. Carson probably lost the most tonight because he had the most to lose, but nobody else really gained. Maybe Mike Huckabee gained amongst uh, social conservatives because he had some great lines, and he was basically the only one that really had anything to say about social conservative issues, but that's it. So, yes, Carly wins again. She's going to see some gains, but I think she's also going to see some losses when we go into the next debate. Here we go again next month. It's getting nutty, folks. We're in the silly season. It's going to be like this for a good long time. Buckle up with Behind Enemy Lines. Rush, you ready to shut this sucker down? I am biggest loser, biggest loser tonight, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's the biggest loser. 90% of Americans think that illegal immigration is a problem. All the Republicans on the stage also believe that. Clinton's losing big time. Gene... Shut this mofo down. All right. From a very tired studio here at Cafe on the Hill, behind me line signing off. Till next week. Good night, folks. Our position has been compromised. It's time to roll out. Report for debriefing at www.behindenemylinesradio.us and look for regular communications via Facebook and Twitter. At BEL underscore radio. You are the resistance behind enemy lines. Back in seven days. Out.